guys welcome back sith from the dongers of Frontera. how the heck are we all the question we ask at the start of nearly every video so um if you guys um watch our videos and if you do thank you very much indeed it's most appreciated if you like them please say you like them hit the thumbs up and all good in the hood um I've had a few things back on Facebook. Apparently people can't find Dongers of Runeterra on Facebook. Uh, it's kind of simple. You go to the search box, you type in Dongers of Runeterra, and there we are. That's why I don't add it to the linked comments below. So that's one little thing. Uh, number two, we... Uh, I guess I'm probably the deck builder of the three Dongers. Um, I like trying to make decks that work, and people have really liked my Jinx deck, and people have kind of... Uh, like a few other things that I've made, but uh, I've always really liked the the spooky, darker, pull people back from the dead. Uh, if you ever see my um, uh, before we went gold and had this lovely thing, I could have went easily platinum um, with the Endure deck. It's a deck that I really enjoy to pilot. It's very fun for me to play. The only problem was it was Callista and Elise and not Hecarim, and I genuinely think. That the buff to Hecarim in the previous patch in 1.2 was really good. So I tried to make Hecarim work. But now I think I actually might have made him work properly. So um, I don't do these videos until I've already tested the deck at least 10 times. I've tested it 10 times on normal. And I, well, it, 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 it's only lost once. So that's kind of good for me. That if a deck has a 90% win rate in normal against all manner of decks like five six champion decks meta decks whatever uh, it's probably good enough to take on ranked so i went on ranked with it and i'm 3 or with it already that's when i stopped and this is why i'm doing this right now so i'm going to show you the deck um i haven't even made a name for it really um i suppose i should have already had it all ready to go but i don't uh, but it's down here at the uh, I, i'm i'm calling it the harrowing because that also got a buff in the brand new patch 1.4. So I'm looking for value. I'm looking for consistency. I'm looking for things that the other people just can't get rid of. But then you've got to be very mindful of the meta. And uh, I mean, the patch came out uh, yesterday and we're seeing such uber aggro and uh, you know, the Endure deck is still there. Hammer Vaya is still there. There's Elusive Burn. There's uh, Kinko Elusives. So there's loads of things that just need to get stopped really quickly. Unless you can be even quicker. So this deck that I've built here is... It's sort of like the, the Endure base with a few changes. And the most notable change... Uh, is Hecarim has replaced Elise. So, I mean, Elise is great. Um, but I think Hecarim's buff is so good right now that not to use Hecarim in a deck, especially in a very uber-fast meta where they want to get, like, all metas immediately go aggro and see how much damage they can do which is why the elusives are doing so well on ladder i i i have went for uh hecarim and uh, there he is overwhelm summon two attacking spir uh, spectral riders uh, he levels up when you've attacked with seven plus ephemeral allies um ephemeral allies then get a bump of three attack still summoning the two um this is what you get um when it comes up so if he's buffed there now five twos and uh there you go you've got the uh, summon two spectral riders anyway if you pull a second hecarim after dropping him so there we go that's pretty much where we are i would really like to make this guy work I've got a feeling that this is probably going to be a genuine tier 2, tier 1.5. It still needs a bit of work, but it is really solid. It's a solid base. 
As always, guys, the deck will be available on the Dongers of Rinterra Discord, and it will also be available in the pinned comments below. But come and join the Discord, join the group, sh show us what decks you're playing, we'll help you make them better. Uh, and what I like to do is make a deck, show it off, explain why we're doing it, do the mulligans, all that kind of carry on, and let's go. So the first card in the deck, and I'm just going to take them one by one, is Fading Memories. Uh, pick a follower, create an ephemeral copy of it in hand. Kind of handy for zero anytime you've got Hecarim on the board and you want that extra one, or you're firing Hecarim out and you need another ephemeral to get him to level. So that would go out first. That'll level up Hecarim. That'll bump everybody else. It's really decent. Uh, I've went three Bark Beasts. Any of these can be if any of my my um, units in this deck can be hit with fading memories. I don't really care as long as Hecarim is on the board. I don't really mind at all. Uh, Sapling toss to me has been superb for one. Okay, so you don't get it when you cast it. That's not so bad. And I normally leave it for later on. So on, on a later turn and turns like three four five just because you've got a spare mana there's no point you using it if you're starting to lose board space which you should not in this deck by any stretch um it's good to drop it um and then it pops out straight of the deck and hits your side of the board summoned already it's really really good i mean the sapling is literally it's a it's a two one but it's got challenger so if you're attacking it's brilliant you want it to die as it dies anyway take a big unit away put two into it you know if it's a nautilus it does nothing against it but it stops and allows you to get your things through so that's why it's a three of glimpse beyond you know in endure if you played the endure deck you wanted things to die you wanted callista to see things die that was the pope premise of the deck and it's really 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 good there are at times where you will want to use glimpse on your own guys not to just draw the two guards though you will want it because you will want to well my decks always have little tricks so we'll, we'll explain the little trick later on but this card is real good it's really 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 good and we'll tell you why later Two Green Glade Jewels for the elusive counter. Okay, so if they're bringing out Green Glade Jewels. They're bringing out the 4-3. You've got something you can smack two into it and block it off, and they are really good. Added to which, if you're playing a deck that isn't running elusives, they can run Riot straight across, and they need dealt with. Because every time you summon an ally, it gets a plus one. So if you have a couple of cheap units, like the Bark Beast like the haunted relics which we'll get to in a minute it all goes plus ones plus ones plus one it's so good so you'll normally be hitting with her for four yes she's only got one yes she can get file feasted yes she can get killed by any one one damage spell withering whale kills her she's vulnerable but if they don't have it at the time you're going in for two three four five even at times six damage with a two cost two one drop haunted relic plays two important roles in this deck it's three unleashed spirits they're only one one that's it that's all i've got but it helps hecarim amazingly and you want them to attack now at a push you can hold them back for defense nine times out of ten though if their units are quite small then you'd probably just let the damage go through that's not a bad thing to do and then keep the spell mana you would have spent for that play what you were going to play the next turn make sure there's three units that you can get and attack with all three of them and if you, you guys aren't going to die open attack or however you want to do it but there's almost 50 percent of hecarim's attacking ability straight away done like that because though they are ephemeral and an ephemeral unit is that it dies when it strikes or when the round ends that's what he needs he needs to have attacked 
with ephemeral units. So, some people have been doing this in the Burn Aggro Shadow Isles deck. They have been putting in Shark Chariot. Last breath. The next time an ephemeral ally attacks, revive me attacking. We have two of these. It's a two drop, three one, that does pretty much the same as the Green Glade Duo. But if you put out the Green Glade Duo, uh, the Haunted Relics, put three of them out, and this is already died at any point before you do this, out it goes. Out it goes. So Ephemeral is the theme of the deck by Miles. And you will see why it's so important when I put three Soul Shepherds in. So summon an ephemeral, which we're doing quite a lot of. There's an awful lot of ephemeral stuff here. You're granting at 1-1. One, one. So even the bark beast at a 1-1 one, one suddenly becomes a 2-2 two, two if you've added the fading memories to it. But adding the fading memories to it, you're actually making it ephemeral and it will disappear anyway. If you've got the soul shepherd out, which is this one. You're granting it plus one, plus one. Why does this work? Okay. Say we have our unleveled up Hecram going out. He's safe as houses. The other person has no mana or one mana. It's not going to do anything to our Hecram whatsoever. He puts out two ephemerals. If we have already had a short chariot out, it comes out. But instead of the haunted relics only being i've just killed it like a fool <laughs> come here green glade you lovely person you we'll put you back no that's not true it was 200 relics silly boy if these come out and the soul shepherds there they're getting two twos the Hecarims are coming out and they are getting three threes. Now it's becoming problematic for the, your opponent. Really problematic for your opponent. The more we can buff our guys through death, we are in a much better situation than at any other time in the meta that we've had since beta. That's not a big thing to say, but buffing seems to be the way to win games. It's overwhelm through things like Darius is becoming back again. That extra point of health has helped him quite a bit. Braum is starting to see a lot of play. His additional one cost and his additional attack and the fact that he gets a free Poro, which was his level up, the first time he gets hit and survives is great. Hecarim going to 5-5 five, five in the patch before is also great. So, how else can we help? Well, Soul Shepherd helps. Shark Chariot helps. Because every time you throw Hecarim out, that's a summoning a Shark Chariot. It all builds up. It just genuinely builds up. Valtheist is amazing. Again, for two ways. You might have noticed that there is no 2-2 two, two here for the gatekeeper to make him into the 4-3. And that's the reason why. I think that's actually a, a pretty bad nerf. Getting a 1-1 one, one can't block to a 4-4 four, four by doing anything to do that was great. The 4-3, it now dies to so many things. It dies to a Thresh attack. It dies to a Shen attack. It dies to a Lee Sin attack. It dies to a Z attack. It just... It's now no longer the unit that it was, and because of that, I have not put it in this deck whatsoever. The Valface is really good for being able to hit one of these. And that's really, really good. That's really, really good. That kills it. The other uh, elusives at two costs. Uh, Navori Conspirator is in there. Um, 
and the other elusive is the four cost which is shadow assassin is also two and there's solitary monk for four three hitting these down and then being able to do something else to ruin it actually puts elusive players at a huge disadvantage um so the elusive burn they're kind of playing this one to play that one play that one out play this one it's a good deck it's very difficult to play properly so it's at least medium if not hard difficulty to play to get it right anybody can play this game but to play it properly you need to know exactly which cards to replace anyway now we're talking about a different deck all the two all the ones though so river shapers Blighted Caretakers. Um, the Green Glade Jewels. The Green Glade Lookout. All these sort of things. Just die. That's dead. That's dead. That's dead. These are all dead. That's dead. So they're really good. Uh, and for two, really good. And as you can see, we have 2, 5, 8, 11, 13, 15... 17, 20, 23, over 50% of our deck costs less than 2. So it's a really low mana cost. Now let's move this along. So if we're doing ephemeral units, why the heck would we not go with the guy who creates an ephemeral unit? Which is this one. He creates the Living Shadow. When he levels up, and all you got to do to level him up, well and truly, is um, let either this, either this one, or Zed himself, strike the enemy nexus twice by attacking. Uh, they've both got quick attack, so they are really, really quite good at doing what they need to do. Um, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Especially as you've got a soul shepherd out, hopefully the turn beforehand, to make this guy a 4-3. Which is as good as he is. Because essentially they, the living shadow becomes... A 4-3 when he levels up. She's making Zed's shadows 4-3s. And again, with the attack, the attack has to come when you throw out Zed. You are doing stuff to build up this chap. Who I really think needs a place in this meta. Definitely. How else can we... Uh, do things well this deck is ionia shadow isles and not too many people play ionia shadow isles decks and if they do they play will of ionia because like if you're playing ionia and you're not doing it why not so here's my two reasons why not number one it doesn't fit in here and number two i want to be putting as much pressure on you as possible and saving a bit of mana each turn to try to get to round six and seven where my deck then explodes so i've got two denies that'll stop your will of ionia that'll stop your building up your whatever you need to build up with kind of thing no you're not using your vengeance no you're not using your atrocity i will be keeping the, the four mana there nearly all the time to stop anything especially late game i won't do it for little things but for things that will drastically affect how the game plays out that's why there's two deni uh two denies never good collector is a three of because he is the mvp in any any undead deck any shadow wilds deck that doesn't run at three of these quit the game uninstall it go play Yu-Gi-Oh. pokemon is also a thing go and play something else this guy is just unbelievable we're killing so much We've got so much ephemeral units. This guy just keeps our health in around 19 or 20 all the time after round 5. If you've got the cash, you drop it straight on him. Blow all your mana. He is fantastic. All you got to do is keep at least one of them. You get two of them down. It is good night, Irene. You have just won the lotto. He is amazing. Oh dear, there goes my um, shark chariot. There's one from your nexus. Heal one to mine. Oh no, there's three unleashed spirits being fired at you. So I've just healed three and taken three off you for a damage swing of six. That is bonkers. I mean, it's 
he is literally one of the best cards in Legends of Runeterra by Miles. And if I could have him as my icon, that's the person I would choose. So we're going to go down to the last four cards in the deck. And we're going to leave the two sixes. Because the harrowing got changed in patch 1.4 as well. And I'm playing two of them. Which has revived the six strongest allies that died in this game and grant them ephemeral. It, wh what? So I don't know if you, you guys played in the beta or have played too long, but it used to not read this at all. It was revived the six strongest allies across both boards. So if you were playing deep, they were bringing back. Even if you killed Nautiluses, they were all coming back. This is awesome and kind of why I call the deck the Harrowing. Because now it's just your side of the board. Now it's only your units that are coming back. So you drop this on the round you're attacking. For the love of good God, do not drop this defending. Because this wins you the game. This ends the game. If you're coming back with a couple of Hecarims or uh, a couple of Zeds and a couple of big buffed out units, you, you, you just win. You just win. Because Soul Shepherd's probably going to come out as well. Because she's already uh, a 2-3. You know? This is just so damn good. I mean, this is so good. You, okay, yes, you've got to worry about Ruination. That's fine. That's why we've got two of them. Because when you're getting to this round 9, round 10 bit, you've got to be looking for Vengeances and Atrocities and Ruinations. But you've got two. And... If you're getting the like seven or eight that you just hold it in your hand try and stay alive drop this on your next attack move and go we've also got two of these guys so when i'm summoned revive the strongest dead allied champion so we would have a zed if uh if he has died chances are he's probably already dead so it's probably going to be one of him however if hecarim has been taken off the board by a huge fluff of poros or a gigantic endure hecarim also comes back so it's the strongest one that comes back and by strongest this is what they mean highest power so hecarim has got five power said has only three he is brilliant absolutely brilliant at bringing champions straight back not quite as good as Thresh because you've actually got to throw him out and he brings you one in. But to be able to bring back a Hecarim, I mean, that's 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 GG right there. I mean, that is GG done and dusted. But here's the combo and here's why the deck has literally destroyed everything. And I haven't had to use it every time. But if you get it, these are the two cards that are just ridiculous together. To be able to dawn and dusk a Hecarim some are two exact copies of an ally, not a champion, not a follower, just an ally. That's any unit in the card in your deck. And they're ephemeral, and then you're running these, and you run the two ephemeral ones out. And if you've got a soul shepherd left, you're hitting for something like 52 damage, which is like, oh my god, good like like it's oh 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 it's 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 hideous it is hideous so i don't know whether to call this the dawn or dusk deck or the harrowing i think i'm going to call it the harrowing even though that this is the combo the harrowing just wins you the game i mean it really does just win you the game uh because so much of your stuff is dead like so much of it is dead um because even if your bark beast has seen an ally die you know, he comes back as a 3-3. I mean, that's, that's, that's brilliant. So, I just genuinely think that this young man is well, well, well worth trying out. Um, undead decks are kind of hard to play. You've got to know what you want in your opening hand. So, let's go what I want in my mulligan. So, I would want a good curve. So, a bark beast would be good. A glimpse beyond would be good. A haunted relic would be good. And a shark chariot. Anything 
under the twos, any of these whatsoever, are really, really good. If you want that shark to carry it dead as fast as possible, drop it on any round at all. Better if it attacks, still good if he's attacked and you've got the two, drop it the next time you throw something out, especially Zed who can come out in the next one. Zed is a brilliant one to keep. Denies are okay, but only really for late game. So ideally I'd want a Bark Beast, a Geo, a Haunted Relic, a Shark Chariot, a Soul Shepherd, or a Zed. Any of those, and you are good to go. Yeah, you are literally good to go. You've got a really good cost curve that you'll be able to drop two units by round four if you don't get a Zed. You've got enough to kind of fill the board up with. Unlike the Endure decks, we are not going, I'm going to kill a unit to get two things that die. That makes no sense in this deck whatsoever. As it is, I'm still looking for possibilities and cards that could go in here that could make it better. I mean, that is still a consideration. Will of Ionia is still a consideration. Grasp of the Undying is still a consideration. Um, we only have Neverglide as a, as a five drop. We only have Zed as a three drop. So we have got rooms in there to be able to do stuff with. I'm not going to go down the elusive route at all. We could play Shadow Shift, but at the minute it's working so well that I don't want to change anything. And that's the why I'm going to show you the deck. This has got this has got legs, I think, and could be an amazingly good deck, especially in the early days of the 1.4 patch meta. The deck code is in the pinned comments. The Discord link to join us for free is in the pinned comments. Come join the Dongers of Fonterra. We're waving our Dongers everywhere. And we want you to join us. So until you do, hit like, hit subscribe, tell your friends. And we will see you in the very next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Dong is out. How's it going, guys? Gonna win me this game. So let's see how the Harrowing deck works. Let's give you a gameplay video. We're normal. Always go there to check out a new deck. Seven. Even if you've net decked right it now. or you've made it yourself, just yeah. go there. It's um, it's a lot. It's not that it's easier. It just doesn't affect your ranking. It doesn't affect your MMR. It doesn't affect your ladder climb. It's very low it chance kind of lets you know if it's a good deck on hand, or if not. That is I that. think this is a really yeah. good one. Um, you know, if we get whoop, whoop. out the... Um, they never glade and do all the Less yes and healing for everything when we get out the Who soul knew? seeker. There's so many ways this deck can just Who win knew? and uh, throw out ephemeral damage really, really, really easily. So, like welcome uh, all the newcomers to the Let's see what we actually are up against. Before. So it's a gold v gold matchup. Good for you, sir. And it's burn. Okay. It's a pleasure having you here. Okay, so these are all. Uh, completely useless. We're keeping the Soul Shepherd as she is marvelous. So the Fury of the North actually made a case for staying in the deck. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go first. We're attacking on odds. Let's get that in. We'll do this. We'll end the round. Rome, oh Anivia dear god, Ash. this that, could be That feels like someone brilliant. that really haven't decided on which champs that should be in the deck. Okay, th this could be real good. We've got such the deck. ephemeral yeah, stuff now deck. There. Um, that I think playing this is a good call. Because we're going to throw this out. Which helps with uh, the Bark Beast. So I'm going to so drop the Bark Beast down first, that I didn't then I'm going to drop Overhawk, this one. This will turn into a 4-2. Okay. Yes, yeah. If he has everyone as a 1-up, that would be very... Let's say... And it will die and um, these will both turn to 3-3. Three that, that would be surprising. So that's pretty much... Very surprising. All I'm doing. This isn't part of the training! 
Okay, that's fine. So he, he stops the damage, he recalls that, that's absolutely so cool and groovy. If he wants to block with that guy, be my but guest. But that's about to go pop! I wish to win. Nago. I really wish to win. Pop! Yay! All good, man. All good. And I'm more than happy to uh, kill one, one of these out. guys. Absolutely more than happy to do that. And then I'm gonna drop this. Okay, this is looking good. Like, I don't know what. Well, I have He's doing time. nothing? Really? Let's see what okay. he puts down. Will he put down his inspiring mentor again and do the buff? Grant an ally in hand plus one like he like, did for that lovely God, skill snapper. No, he's going to Green Gilead Elder. Yeah. Excellent. I'm going to pass again because I want the mana. Because I can kill that. Can yep, make you. survive. Good for you, sir. Okay, I guess okay. him survive. So I think worth. we are in with uh, a real yeah, good shot of doing something really good time. here. I'm even tempted to drop this one down as you well. I really want that guy dead. Right. Uh, because Soul Shepherd is such a good card that two of them to bump up all the ethereals that are about to come in here is just going to board wipe him. Um, no joke about that. Need to make so we'll sure he stays here. alive, though. So that's that's the thing. Let's let's keep Zed alive, please. Yet, that would be real good, man. Oh, uh, I have no idea how so. to pronounce your name, but um, nice to play you. Okay, that's fair that's enough. enough. That's fair enough. I'm gonna do this. That's pretty good. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not blocking that one. I'm gonna lose Zed. I know I'm gonna lose Zed. But these are all coming out to play. Hello. Uh, hello and hello oh hello you hello all of you hello lovely you uh, so there's a level Z um all these five threes and and are you ready ta-da that's how this works it is just ridiculous and I didn't even get to use Hecarim it's oh nice! It's just Mr. real Vendetta. good. Like so if you can get two of hand. those seers out, you're doing really, really, or a really deck. well. Like that. Uh, let's look at the deck again really quickly to kind of let you know what the I'm MVP cards decks. are. The MVP cards the quite easily are have. haunted relics, shark chariots, soul shepherds, Zeds, Neverglade collector, Hecarim. And then these two sort of win you the game by bringing back champions and stuff. But all of these sort of things, Zed throwing out his guy, you know, fading memories just to kind of put like another ephemeral out there just to get the bump from the, the Soul Shepherd. If you get Soul delayed, Shepherd to play around that, Twitch, if you so get Zed, you still play around that. that. It's just so not quite as good. Timer again. But all the ephemeral just does my fantastically well with Hecarim. Guys, my name Come is Seth Holocron. I'm from let's, the Dongers of Runeterra. The deck code is in the bottom of this video. Please, please, like this please, hand is if so you like interesting the video, that I'm thumbs up it. and subscribe. Come join us in Discord. The link is also at the bottom. And uh, I don't from everybody here, the know if of it's Terra, good, we've only got one thing left to say. I'm going to keep it. Dong is that! <laughs>